really looking forward to this one. Uh, Greg Conlon has been a great guest here before with a tremendous record of service, including president of the California Public Utilities Commission. He's running for Congress, and I want to get right to this, but uh, before we get to his candidacy, Greg, first of all, welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. You were a delegate representing California at the Republican National Committee. And while I happen to have been an alternate at some previous uh, convention like this, I think many people would really not know what happens. So why don't you tell us in our audience a bit about what it's like to have the four days there and before and well, after. First of all, so I was not a delegate. I was a guest. Because oh, by the time I figured out that I needed to be a delegate, it was three months too late. So I, uh, I was a guest. And, but it was, you had all the privileges of the delegates, except you couldn't get on the floor, except by invitation. So I, I got down there a few times, but not, not all the time. We thought we saw you waving a flag, but I guess that wasn't hey, you. Well, there was quite a few of them waving flags. <laughs> but no, I, I, it was a great, great experience. Four days. And, uh, you know, it really, people need to understand the process because it's so unique in, in our process in, in the United States to have a convention like that. And, you know, it wasn't a contested convention in the sense that we had two presidential candidates, but the energy and the experience of speakers that was just, I, I went to the one the previously in New York. And it was, you know, it was very energizing there, too. But this one just was uh, above the one in, in New York. It, it just was so unique in the, you know, the first the hurricane, you know, on Monday. And out of respect to the, the hurricane and the people that were in harm's way, they just did a business meeting in the afternoon and shut off the convention at night. But then as the hurricane passed through Louisiana on Tuesday, they had a full, full schedule and they got back on track. And got the got the speakers in the evening. It was on TV, I'm sure, so people got to see. But we had, you know, all the wannabes. You had Giuliani, Romney, uh, uh, Thompson, uh, Huckabee. I mean, they all spoke. And then we had two of our executives here in uh, Silicon Valley, uh, Meg Whitman and Carla Farino. So it was quite a uh, an entourage of people that spoke uh, on Wednesday night. And then, well. Before I go to Wednesday and Thursday, I want to divert a little bit because the California delegation, being the long, largest delegation, has almost, uh, we figured out about 300 delegates, two to 300 delegates. So there's California planes just coming right in. Well, no, but we all stay at the same hotel, and each, each state has their own hotel. So they have meetings in the morning that are not on television, that are just exclusively for the delegates, the alternates, and the guests of that state delegation. So we had some fantastic speakers uh, in the mornings that people really didn't get the, the witness. And then it had some meetings that conducted in the afternoon uh, also that were unique, that, that some were California and some were, were open to everybody. So I, I was able to go to the breakfast meetings on Monday and Tuesday, and they had some great speakers. They had uh, Governor Wilson spoke, uh, Senator Hatch spoke. Uh, we had a, a one of the prisoners in, in the prison camp in Hanoi with uh, John McCain, a gentleman by the name of Co Coffee, also spoke, and he was very. Uh, was, you know, he talked about how they communicated in camp, and uh, and he talked a lot about John McCain. But I mean, everybody's heard John McCain's experiences, but to have these other prisoners talk about, it was very, uh, very emotional, very inspiring, and, and I think Pete Wilson, Governor Wilson, uh, you know, really a attacked the. Democratic platform and the, and the Obama's, you know, he really characterized Obama, I think, more as a as a socialist than as an independent, and that the that the he talked about Russia and and the fact that uh, their attack on Georgia was really a recognition that they're probably more like the USSR than they are a uh, you know an open country. So it was a, it was very good, and I I think the one other meeting I went to was with the veterans that, you know, that was probably the most emotional and most inspiring part of the convention. I, I, uh, I'm a veteran myself and, but I, I didn't, I wasn't a veteran during any war. I, I had to, I had fought the battle of, of poor maintenance on of flying airplanes. I was a pilot in the Air Force, but 
But they talked about the homeless veterans, and I, I just never realized the magnitude of that. I mean, there's 25 million veterans in this country, and there's probably 200,000 of them are homeless. And it's just the magnitude of that when you hear it for the first time was just overwhelming. And I just, you know, they talk about the part of the reasons is the post-traumatic syndrome disorder and the fact that some of these people just cannot get employment because they're not able to do it, and they, yet they're not so bad that they can get uh, disability. So it's a, it's a very difficult situation. And I think there were two congressmen and there were uh, uh, two ex-homeless veterans that spoke that just moved me personally. And I, I, you know, I made a pledge to myself that you know, if I'm elected, I'm certainly going to do something to figure out how to help these 200,000 homeless veterans. And if I'm not elected, I think on a volunteer basis, I will do something. I've just not, I talked to one of my friends who was also a veteran, and he, and he, he agreed that after the election, if I do not win, that I, that I will do something. So it was quite, a, and John Voigt, the actor, was there, and he was very uh, eloquent in, in talking about the same problem. So that was uh, uh, an unusual experience for me, and I, uh, you know, I just wanted to mention it in passing. But getting back to the convention itself, you know, I'm, I'm going on here without any questions. I hope that's all right. That's fine. That's all right. I think the uh, Sarah Palin speech on uh, Wednesday night was, you know, everybody was anticipating this woman that no one knew. I mean, I don't think there was a person in the house except for John McCain and some of his, you know, his, his close confidants really understood and knew this woman. So when she walked on that stage and started speaking, you know, everybody was expecting her to fall right on her face. And everybody was kind of holding their breath. And, you know, after about 10 minutes, I think everybody just breathed a sigh of relief that she wasn't going to embarrass the party. But after about 20 minutes, you know, she was hitting home runs. And I think before she was over, she hit a grand slam. I mean, she energized that convention. Uh, it was like a bolt of lightning went across that floor. It was like spontaneous combustion. I mean, you, you could just feel the energy in the building. I mean, going up, and it's and to this day, it's carried over. I mean, I've never seen something that was so so energizing. And I don't want to, in any way, not mention John McCain's speech, acceptance speech, because it also was unique. It wasn't unique for, for the same reasons. But he came across so sincere, and so, I don't know. It was, you know, it almost made me cry there right at the end. And I, you know, I'm I'm probably an emotional Irishman, but. But, I, I mean, he really got to me that, that the hero is a guy that's been through all this for all his life. He's from the time he was a teenager and his father was an admiral and his grandfather was an admiral. I mean, he's been serving or wanting to serve his country for all his life. And the fact that he's there now to do that, you know, even if he's not elected, he, you know, he's certainly qualified and he certainly uh, sold us, the people at the convention, that he was the right man. So between the two of them, they just completely energized all of the delegates, all the people at the convention. And then, you know, last night in San Mateo County, we had 250 people come out to support McCain and, and, and Palin. And, you know, those are primarily Republicans and independents. And if you had told me six months ago that you could get 250 people in San Mateo County to come out and do that, I wouldn't have believed you. So it, it's carried over. That's certainly a real feat. Oh, I mean, it's just, I mean, they've just, people are so ready, man. They, they, they don't know. They, a woman came up last night, she says, I don't care what I do, I want to do it. I, I'll do anything you want me to do. So, I mean, they're just so convinced that they, they're on the right team and, they're, and they want to help it win. So. Do you think the conventions are doing what they, what they need to do? Some people say the, the enormity of the cost but it, it sounds like it, it, it provided that focal point to really uh, galvanize the, the Republicans and certainly on the Democratic side, galvanize them for, you know, for their efforts. But uh, from your perspective, it, it sounded like it was, uh, I, I it think was if McCain, a very defining if, moment. If McCain and Palin win, and if I should win in, in San Mateo County, you'd have to go back to those two speeches, Sarah Palin and John McCain. I mean, that's where it's all started. I know it's energized me. There's less than 50 days left, and I, you know, I pledged to ring so many doorbells. I'm not even going to mention a number because nobody would believe me. So, uh, 